All right, guys, welcome back for another video. In this video, I want to cover a topic um, <clears throat> of consolidations on the macro level in Bitcoin. Now, uh, this is unique to Bitcoin, just based off uh, Bitcoin's uh, unique supply structure. It may not necessarily apply to other asset classes, but <clears throat> basically the, the characteristic pattern I want to point out is that anytime you get a consolidation <clears throat> in Bitcoin coming off a major rally, it always generally that's a time where you want to be distributing right if if uh, it's a good way to add the element of time into your uh, your trading methodology for example right here you know price stalls right uh, so you have this parabolic run up and then you get price moving sideways uh, that's generally <clears throat> when you want to be uh, distributing right so on this run up because you don't necessarily know you can't call the absolute peak but once you see the peak put in, then you can start distributing and each run up gives you a chance to uh, hedge your position and then you get a consolidation breakdown. Same thing up here. You get this dramatic run up and then price moves sideways. This is uh, generally when people, <clears throat> you know, they may, they'll see this as very bullish, right? Because they see this parabolic run up and they're like, well, this is a very uh, significant uptrend, which technically it is. But um, if you just backtest it, you can see pretty clearly that these consolidations do break down. Uh, so after a par parabolic run up, you get sideways price movement, you get distribution, breaks down. And the, uh, you have the same effect uh, coming you know, off a, uh, uh, for, for consolidations on the bottoms, essentially. So um, when, and, and it's especially whenever you break down from one consolidation to another consolidation. So if you look at this, basically, I know it's not perfect, but for all intents and purposes, Bitcoin was um, <clears throat> in this range from, you know, late November 2013 to, you know, December 14. So roughly, uh, you know, about about a year in this this general range right here where people are trapped within this consolidation. If you think about it from this this way to this way again it's not perfect but anytime you get a break below a major consolidation like this um, then you're gonna have the opposite effect right then when you see price stalling uh, to the downside then that's not when you want to be uh, looking for uh, to enter short positions that's when you want to play the same effect to the upside right start buying the lows not trying to call the absolute bottom but you know uh, starting to accumulate and you see the same thing here, even on a very small, even on the small time frames, right? So you get a run up, consolidation, sell off. Again, it's not a huge sell off down, but you get this period of contracting volatility. Uh, it generally what it's showing you is that liquidity is drying up. It needs to run lower for liquidity before continuing the move. Same idea here. Price runs up, then comes down a little bit, consolidates. You get narrowing volatility right there and volatility runs to the downside looking for liquidity <clears throat> go up again now this is a little bit more parabolic but you even even have the same uh distinction here right so you get a parabolic run up and then price moves uh you know sideways for five weeks which you know on the chart in hindsight it doesn't look that significant but if you were in it at the time it would probably seem very significant price moves sideways runs down this is when people would be getting bearish, but really you should be distributing into this area here and then unloading those hedges down here on the down close candle. Because remember, uh, smart money buys on the uh, down close candles right here, right here. Uh, and then of course here, then there's your macro top. So uh, you don't necessarily, right? Nobody is going to be able to pick this high right here, right? Like everybody just getting into the market thinks they can do that. Uh, nobody can ever do that. I mean, the, you know, if, if you do manage to do it, it's just complete luck. But what you can do is you can see, you know, when it comes down and then you put an indecision candle here, well, this next run up, right? Because you get the sideway price action. Then you can sell this one, right? You're not calling the top, but you, you see that the market's entering a different state of delivery. It's starting to consolidate. Then it runs down, picks up liquidity, runs back up. And kind of tying back into the previous theme we were talking about, whenever you have a consolidation like this, right, like you basically 
spend so much time. Uh, of course, there's a lot of volatility in Bitcoin, but basically, uh, essentially what you have is you have price coming down to this, say, uh, below the 10,000 level. So it, it bounced off it and then it came below the 10,000. And you can describe the period from January to November of 2018. Basically, all of 2018 is being primarily within the $10,000 to $5,000 uh, price range, right? Just kind of <clears throat> moving down and oscillating off it. And so this is an area where you can establish uh, different hedges, right? So you can, you know, you can uh, buy here, sell on the lower high. Uh, but the idea is that to understand the nature of this contracting volatility. So when you see this, you can also know that a break below a major consolidation like this, where the market has spent a year in this consolidation, is going to represent a capitulation event, right? All the people who bought, you know, people bought maybe, and, and of course they didn't buy the direct support, right? Most people bought the rip here, the rip here, and the rip here. Maybe they bought every rip, right? And held for a year uh, through a period of lower highs. Then this is going to be too painful to bear. Most people are going to capitulate. And, that, and then you get the same effect as when price pauses at the absolute top and you get a price pause. Same idea here. Break below this consolidation. You get capitulation price action. And that, <clears throat> but of course, you, you don't really know that a bottom starting to form until it starts to move sideways. But once you see the sideways formation, that gives you the opportunity. Of course, when it starts creating this higher high, then that, that's your you know, confirmation, but <clears throat> really the first signal is when it starts moving sideways. Same idea up here. So, of course, when you have a major resistance like this uh, that everybody's looking at, it's it ends up not being major resistance, right? Price just breaks right through it. Actually breaks, uh, let's put a 618 right here. So, breaks up right into a 618, just perfectly right there. And then enters a period of consolidation. If you were long from here, then you can say, you know, <clears throat> you could look at this and say, okay, well, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily know that the top's in here, but I know that price is coming off like a 4X move and now it's starting to go sideways. I think liquidity is drawing away from the market. Whereas, you know, a lot of other people would be saying this is a bull flag. This is a bullish consolidation because they're thinking that this is a, an uptrend, you know, it's a bull market, but you know that, okay, if price goes parabolic and then stalls, that means liquidity is drying up from the move and liquidity will need to run to the downside to, you know, collect uh, more liquidity. And that's exactly what you get here, right? You also have a similar kind of idea with this black swan event, right? Because again, it's not, not completely perfect, but you do have this area here and you could also put it here. So price does spend a considerable amount of time within this range. Uh, you've got the uh, 7K to 11K range, and price basically spends uh, the better part of a year in this range. So when you get the thrust below uh, any range where you know price is spent a year within, you get that dramatic flush. That's a capitulation event. Price runs up. Now, I guess the, the one uh, situation where you didn't have that is right here, but I think it's important to mention out to mention the reason for that. And that's because you have the, uh, you have the having event, the 2020 having event. So that's an extremely, extremely bullish uh, event in Bitcoin's history. And uh, that, so it, it's no surprise that you have a little bit of an outlier situation right there. Um, but then again, you see it right here as well. So <clears throat> price has a little bit of a rally here, comes up, starts moving sideways. This is not not bullish accumulation. This is volatility contracting. And then you get the down close candle. This is when people start getting bearish. But if you understand this, this concept, you know that you want to buy on the down close candle on the breakdown from the consolidation. See the breakdown here, buy on the down close candle, runs up, buy on the down close candle runs up, buy on the down close candle. You, you, you see the same, um, see the same uh, type of thing there. <clears throat> so again, uh, here's a good example where it, it didn't necessarily work out. 
and that's a good example of how you know it's not going to be a hundred percent accurate nothing is in trading of course um, that's why you don't want to you know you want to distribute over time and not excessively right so that you still have some uh, exposure left to capture uh, this event um, but then you know but then you move up here right and then this becomes a very significant uh, period of consolidation, right? And the more time that price spends in this period of consolidation, the more likely liquidity is to dry away from the market. And then price needs to run down to collect that liquidity lower. And that's exactly what we see here. Uh, so price runs down below this consolidation. If you buy on that down close candle, again, on the break below the consolidation on the weekly, then you get uh, the similar type of pattern, but just to the upside. This is also a Wyckoff accumulation, um, right? You, you know, you can, you, and probably represents a capitulation event as well for a lot of new coming people who bought up here, right? And then you can accumulate, and then price runs up here. Same idea right here. You get a little bit of a pause. This is not a great example, but then you get the slam down. You could buy on these weekly closes. And then you get the run up, up above the all-time high. This is a swing failure pattern. Liquidity is getting run up here. And, you know, you see this sideways price action coming off, right? Like this is the, the momentum, right? This is what you want to see. This, when you see this momentum, you don't want to sell into the momentum, right? You want to sell when you start getting these indecision candles because that's, that's a sign that, you know, selling is occurring. Prices, uh, liquidity is probably drawing away from the market. Price will probably, you know, whether it's going to be the start of a new, a new downtrend or a new uh, uptrend, excuse me, a new downtrend or a continuation of the uptrend, uh, liquidity is still probably moving away from the market. So, like in this case, price runs down to this area of support. You could have scalped that, right? You don't necessarily know that it's going to break down, but it's still a uh, playable trade right there, the scalp. And ultimately, do breaks down below these lows, and then you get a sideways movement. That sideways movement, again, represents a slowdown in the sell pressure. That's where you'd want to be buying, right? When If, say, you, you did call this right and you called the uh, bearish top right here, then you get a slowdown in the, uh, the selling pressure, and then you get a little run up uh, to run for liquidity. And in this case, it's the same idea as the bullish models we just previously talked about, but on the flip side, right? You'd want to be um, selling into these up close candles. Again, it's not perfect, but uh, this this type of uh, strategy will generally get you uh, trading in the right direction of the market because you'll naturally be trading, you know, contrary to the the crowd or the you know what people's opinions of what is bullish and what is not. And a good example is right here in this current price action. You know, Bitcoin is. Uh, just coming off a very parabolic uh, drive down, and now it's moving into the sideways territory. Again, uh, you had that same idea here, but I would describe this as a pretty extreme event. Um, you know, you had a liquidation of major funds in the Bitcoin space, and uh, Three Arrows Capital blew up, Celsius blew up, BlockFi blew up, a lot of different uh, major, major organizations in the space blew up. So. Of course, it represents a little bit of an outlier, but again, you don't know, like, you, you know, this was probably not a bad time, at least if you were short, to 